Right, so in Guild Wars 1, they had this system where they just pretty much gave up on the game after a certain point in time and started developing Guild Wars 2. And they're only releasing content every three, four, five months, something like that. And it's made it so that lots of people have turned away from the game. And so I can see how that, again, new content is key. If they're not releasing content frequently enough, those people that are, are doing that endgame stuff are going to get bored very quickly. Because in Guild Wars 1, there's not that much endgame, but there's enough to keep you occupied. And with that release of new content every three, four, or five months, people have something to do. And if they, if that was more frequent, I think people that played more often would stick with the game. Right. Yeah, and that that's actually a, uh, a bit of a side effect to having the no subscription model. If you don't have a subscription and you're not releasing content, you know, you're going to see your active player base, the people that are logging in every day, just diminish really quickly because they're like, oh, I'm not paying for this anyway. If there's nothing new, I'm not going to log in. You know, there, that's one thing. If people are paying for something, now obviously you run the risk of people canceling subscription if you don't right. put it, you know, content in. But if you're actually paying, if you've already signed up for like three months or six months, if you're on one of those plans, you might feel a certain obligation to, yeah. to, log, to log in and, and get your time in, you know, to, to actually be worth the money that you're spending. So, yeah, and uh, then you're also funding them and giving them the ability to make that new content. So that's another... Right, because I, I was thinking about that, because um, it's buy to play and it's free to play from that, and then you can buy expansion packs when they release it. I was thinking, how are they going to support themselves with just that and with just uh, the, the cash shop, you know? Because they're, 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 they're having the thing where there's, they're not, there's no buy power, there's no ex double XP, and those are the things that we're people buy that's the, that's the things that always people buy so i'm wondering if they can constantly you know fund the game for giving us new content you know i, really I think don't that know. that goes back to their whole business model they're going to be putting out a lot of expansions i would assume similar to what they did with guild wars one you know you had guild wars factions then you had Nightfall and then Eye of the North, and all of those were really just expansions. Well, they play single games, but there wasn't a ton new. I'm sure they just changed some textures. I don't think it was as difficult to do as you might think. So that, that gave them the ability to make some money with that. And once you have that player base going, people are going to keep wanting to buy the next thing. Right. So as long as they can keep you there, the expansion thing will work. Yeah, the, the cash shop can prove to be very powerful. You know, if, if they if they put cosmetic items in there and they put like, you know, like Sneb said, if they put, uh, you know, expansion packs and different things, that, that should be able to fund it. The, the, the key thing is, is being able to tout that there is no subscription model and then put out a game that looks as gorgeous as Guild Wars 2 does. You're going to have a higher uh, player base than if there was a subscription. And I think a subscription would, would kill them. Uh, uh, model because you know you don't ha you only have room for so many of those in the industry. Right. You know you ha you have a mil you have a million plus people that are currently subscribed to Rift. You have over 10 million that are subscribed to World of Warcraft, and there's going to be a huge number of people that sign on in one month, one month from today, to Star Wars: The Old Republic. You know they're yeah. they they think they're gonna. I mean that launch is gonna be huge. It's probably gonna be. I don't know. I hate to put a number out here and be wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised if multiple millions of people subscribe to that. So if Guild Wars releases February, March, April, May, sometime in that time frame next year, and they said subscription, you're going to see a very low p a percentage of people that oh, yeah. jump on the board. I, if, they, if they were right now to say, hey guys, guess what? We decided to put a subscription. Good game. Nobody's going to play. No one's going <laughs> to play. You, can't, you can't go back on that now, especially after making such a big deal about it. Yep. Right. Do, do you think a lot of people are going to like because like DC Universe right I played DC Universe when it first came out it was subscription based and it was buy to play right and that's really hard to pull off I mean that game has to be like crack I mean you get a free month when you buy the game do you think Star Wars is actually going to last with subscription based I think that mostly because it's Star Wars <laughs> just you know Star Wars is a big right. deal everyone people collect the action figures the movies are a big deal I think simply because it's Star Wars, it'll do well. Yeah, it, that's it's just it's Star Wars and it's Bioware. Uh, both of right. those things. Bioware is amazing. I think 
I think subscription model is the smart thing for them to do. They are going to have a very large player base regardless of whether they have it or not. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they can pull off four to five million subscribers, to be honest, in the first year. And that would just be the biggest thing. Uh, that'll be probably the fastest subscriber climb of any MMO if they could pull something like that off. Um, yeah, I think subscription model will work for them very, very well. All right. Yeah, I, I don't mean, think they'll have a problem at all. I don't. I don't want to see another uh, Star Trek uh, online. You know that. Oh, one just, yes. <laughs> that one just fell through. I mean, yeah. so badly. I mean, with Bioware, Bioware with Mass Effect, they have everything back in them with all the voice acting all throughout the the Star yep. Wars. I mean. But it's going to be an MMO kind of like WoW is. It's going to be this huge, slow-moving like battleship. It's not going to have an agile development cycle. At least that's how I'm perceiving it. Because think about it. If they want to put new content in, they need to have all this voiceover work put in. Right. And yeah. th that's good. You know, it's great to have that. So you're not reading quest text. But at the same time, it's it's gonna it's gonna a make it a work. little little yeah, bit of a it'll, beast. It'll be a challenge. A big upkeep. I would I would think. Yeah, I think that's why they need the subscription model because that's the only way they're going to be able to supply. Yeah, they, that. they can't fund it if they right. don't have. Right. Did you guys get into the beta for it? I wish. Yeah. Um. I was watching your videos on it. I think I was offered a beta key, but personally, I I just can't play those kind of MMOs anymore. I just yeah. can't do it. It's just not my style. I I want I wanted to try it out because I'm a Star Wars guy, but um. In the long term, I'm probably not gonna be able to play it because I just I just don't want the point and click anymore. I really don't want it anymore. And I know it's it has a little action need to it, but it's not as much to grab me in. I kind of just I don't I want to be able to dodge an arrow if it's coming towards me, not like yeah. auto attack. I don't like it. Yeah. yeah, you're still going to have to click on people to be able to target them. Well, correct? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because some okay. This side note, complete side note. But somebody in my last video, they asked me that question for my Q and A every Tuesday, and I said that you had to click on, you had to click on people, and then everyone freaked out at me and said, "You don't have to." You, there's no auto attack or whatever, and I was, well, yeah, they got well, all confused. <laughs> it's 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 kind of like hotkey when you can like uh, yeah, you can like do like tab targeting or something. Yeah, right? you can right. tab target, but at the same time, uh. I, I think it was mostly in reference to PvP. They were asking about race size and how would it be more beneficial to be an Azurian thief, let's say, because it'd be more difficult to click on you. And I said yes, because it's, it's more difficult to click on you. But then people argued that, yeah, the, the whole tab thing and stuff. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it depends on what type of player you are. I mean, a lot of people play using the keyboard. A lot of people play using the clicking. A lot of people play differently, you know. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Game's a game. And the key <laughs> buy it, you choose how you want to play it. And the keyboard turners will lose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. All right, guys. Um, I guess that'll be it for today. And as always, we got uh, Snapzor and Bog Otter. Please, I'm going to have annotations right here somewhere on the video. Please check out their channels. Really good Guild Wars 2 content and other games. And we'll see you guys later. Say bye, guys. See you later. Thanks for having me. to talk about with it i don't know if i did the explanation justice kind of got fumbled on my words there <laughs> yeah i have an issue with that also so sometimes i when i get put on the spot i go oh snap I forgot <laughs> everything. <laughs> I, I, was so, I was so much better at explaining this in the shower yeah. <laughs> no kidding <laughs>